It's been a while since I've done this and that's probably not a good thing. I was taking a bit of a break, uh, a bit too long I think. Uh, but today we're going to be going over a potential budget PC for New Zealand. Now, I probably wouldn't actually recommend building at these prices at the moment, just because it's a bit pricey for what I think you can get in terms of like a motherboard and graphics card at the moment. They're quite expensive, and especially if you're trying to go into that budget or mid-range builds, um, they're a bit pricey at the moment. So. This is kind of what I put together based on what I've seen in prices at the moment. So let's go through them one by one. And the total price for this build is $1,402. So a bit much uh, for this build at least, but let's go on what I picked. Starting us off with the CPU, I've gone with the Ryzen 5 5500. It's currently $164.95, it's a six core processor. It's Ryzen 5, it's relatively quick. Now I definitely would recommend something like the 5600 over it if you can afford it. It's around about 250 on special at the moment. But at the budget end, I think 164.95 is not actually a bad price, especially for a six core CPU. Pairing the CPU up is a ASUS motherboard. So it's the ASUS Prime B550 M-K Micro ATX motherboard. It's $218.99 at the moment and that's really expensive. Motherboards seem to be very pricey in New Zealand at the moment. Um, over $200 for a basic motherboard is quite ridiculous in my opinion. Um, but this Ryzen 5 processor will work straight off the bat with this motherboard, although it's priced. Now this motherboard usually used to typically range around anywhere from 150 to 170 in New Zealand so I definitely think you're overpaying for it but in any case it's the most budget board you can get at the moment. Now it's not anything fancy here as you can see it's a very basic motherboard uh, nothing too much to brag about to be honest. Now an alternative to this motherboard is an ASUS TUF B450M-Pro 2 MATX motherboard. Now it's 171 from PB Tech at the moment. The only problem is I wasn't actually able to verify if it's like out of the box compatible with Ryzen 5000 series because I know you're supposed to do a motherboard update, like a BIOS update on these guys before you use 5000 series and they kind of couldn't really confirm that for me. But if you guys do want to take the plunge, it's 171. Um, and you can you guys can try if it works. I'm not sure. Unfortunately, that's why I'm not putting it in the build, but it is an option, a cheaper option as well. And if you already have like a cheaper Ryzen CPU that you can upgrade the BIOS with, then it'd be good to go. I believe Computer Lounge and PB Tech do offer the BIOS update service. So it's like $30. So you guys can look onto that, but that's basically 200. Uh, but between this one and the other motherboard, I definitely say the M, the B450 is actually quite a bit better, um, especially because it's got a proper heatsink on the VRAM there. Um, yeah, as well, second hand for motherboards, pretty good option. Uh, you can get some pretty good B350 and B450 motherboards for Ryzen at the moment on TradeMe, so definitely have a look into that. For the RAM, I've gone with the Corsair Vengeance LPX 16 gigs DDR4 3200. It's CL16, currently around about $88 from First Wave or $89 from Computer Lounge. I think overall, it's a cheap kit of RAM and it's below $90, which is actually pretty good price. It doesn't have any RGB and it's not anything fancy for the CPU at all. Um, it's just a good solid kit that will do you good. Next on the list, we have the Samsung 980. It's a 500 gig M.2 SSD. It's currently $75 from Computer Lounge and then $84 from First Wave. Now, this is a good NVMe option for your boot drive. It's only 500 gigs, but it's relatively quick. It doesn't have any DRAM, unfortunately, um, but it is very, very fast. And especially for its price, I'd probably say it's a good SSD to get if you wanted a nice quick NVMe drive to put in your computer. Now an alternative to it is the Crucial MX500. It's $69 from PB Tech, a bit cheaper. It does have DRAM, but this is a full 2.5 inch SATA SSD, so it's not NVMe. Um, so it's technically a bit slow, but it has DRAM, so um, which is good for longevity, in my opinion. <laughs> um, I probably pick the MX500 over the NVMe, NVMe SSD, but that's just me. You could probably weigh it up. If you're playing only games, then probably the 980 is better. Um, but for me, the MX500 seems like a better value option, especially that it's cheaper. 
Next, we have the graphics card. Now, I've picked the RTX 3060. It's currently 550 from PB and then 588.75 from Ascent. Now, it's a okay graphics card. Um, it looks like this. It's a, got dual fans on it. So, a uh, bit of a cheaper design, I guess, uh, in my opinion, from what it looks like. It's from Galax. So, it's okay. It's not too bad. I think the price is a little bit expensive especially for a 3060 uh, but in my opinion you guys can go for these graphics cards instead if for if you find deals on them so like, like for example an rx 6600 for around about less than 480 or 450 a 6600 xt for around about less than 510 would be a good deal an rtx 3060 for less than around 510 as well um, you can see that i put this one in although it isn't below 510 it's probably one of the cheaper ones between these three cards at the moment, I, it's really hard to find like good prices for these two. The RTX 3060 is basically equivalent to a 6600 XT, or both of them are equivalent to each other. Um, there are some advantages to going with an RTX 3060, um, such as DLSS and ray tracing. But I mean, if at this end, are you really going to be using that type of stuff? I don't know. Probably not. Um, but the RTX 3060 at the moment is one of the cheaper graphics cards which is quite surprising and considering new generations are coming out this is really expensive um so yeah let's head on to the next part and that is the case it's the fantex eclipse p300a it's a mesh micro atx it's a mesh atx mid tower case um now it doesn't come with two any fans at the front it just comes with one exhaust fan I've included that as well, but it comes in $107.69 from PB Tech. Overall, it's a good case to work in. Um, it's pretty fun and easy to use, and it is from Fantex, so it is quite good quality. Definitely would recommend this one for under $110. There's also the Farah R1 as well, which is also a great case to look at if you want to as well. Heading on from that, we've got the fans for this case. So they're the N1 Serious Loop ASL 120. I'd definitely say they're one of the budget, better budget fans and they have this really cool RGB ring in them. I personally use them and at $49 I'd say it's probably one of the better options for fans in New Zealand. Um, yeah, I can definitely recommend these fans and mine are going pretty well in my case still. And yeah, I'm really enjoying them so far. Definitely a good option. So if you're going to put a lot of fans in this case, especially like four of them, and you're going with a cheaper ASUS motherboard that doesn't have enough fan headers, I would definitely want you to get a fan hub. So there's one from Deepcool for $24.99 from PB Tech. Um, all you do is plug it in through the SATA cable here um, into here, and then you plug your fans in all around here, and then you plug another cable um, into the motherboard for the PWM control. So to keep the fans at whatever speed you want. Now there are alternatives, it's kind of expensive $24.99 for something like this. Trade me the $7.69 plus like $6 shipping. Um, same thing, just not as nice a package. And the same thing from Trade Me is available on AliExpress. It's just like $242 New Zealand and then $397 shipping. So not too bad. Literally the same thing, same concept on all of them. I personally got mine off AliExpress, but you can get them for wherever you like. Um, definitely good to invest into, especially if you're going to put more case fans in the end. Now lastly, here we have the power supply. We've gone with the Fractal Design Ion. It's a 550 watt gold certified power supply. It's fully modular as well. It's a relatively high quality power supply and especially at the price of 150 or 149 from Computer Lounge. I think that's actually a pretty good value offering overall, considering it's modular and it's gold certified as well. The only thing lacking on it is only 550 watts, but I think for this type of bull, you definitely will get away with it fine on 550. So totaling up, that comes to $1,402 without the fan hub. Um, so including the fan hub would be $1,427. Um, my maths is correct. Um, and 63 cents. So I'll leave you around there. Uh, with the total build. Now that is kind of expensive at the moment. I'd say the most priciest parts here are probably the um, motherboard and the graphics card which could definitely have some better value offerings. But if you needed to build a PC today this is probably what I would recommend you to build. Now if you can wait I definitely would wait. I'd probably re replace the CPU with a 5600 or an i5 
12400F and this graphics card can come down in price as well and then it will be a better value offering. So that about sums it up. Uh, drop a comment if you have any questions and I'll do my best to try to reply to them. Sorry, I'm starting to work full time now so it's getting really difficult to like keep this up. I will try my best as always. Um, I know I kind of let it go in the last two months but I really needed a break. And I kind of ran out of ideas to be honest with you guys. Um, I'm not okay with putting out content that's like not the highest of quality. And I know this one's definitely not the highest, but I had to get it done just to get back into the groove of things and get back into like a routine of uploading like, regularly. So hopefully I'll be able to keep that up. But yeah, that about sums it up. Check out ystech.org for latest post reviews and much more. I'll see you guys there at ystech.org. But other than that, I hope you guys have an awesome day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.